little and um, I always used to say to my mum that I wanted to be in Vogue and everything like that and like if I ever got upset about, you know, if I didn't do well in some modelling thing, mum would be like, oh, don't worry, you know, you're going to be in Vogue one day and <laughs> stuff like that. And I don't know, it's because... Now we're going to go meet with the editor-in-chief of Vogue Australia. No, <laughs> So when we arrived at Vogue, we got out and we saw Jonathan. Welcome to Vogue Australia. Follow me. It's quite scary. And like, we've got to make a good impression because this is like the chick of chicks in fashion. Hello, Jonathan. Hello. Hi, Hi. Jesse. How are you going? Good. Nice to see you Lovely again. Lovely to see you again. Before that morning, I'd never even heard of her, so I had no idea how much of a huge deal she is. Girls, let me introduce you to Kirsty Clements, the Editor-in-Chief of Vogue Australia. Welcome, girls. I'm very happy that you've joined us here today at Vogue. And uh, I know that you all know that the winner of Australia's Next Top Model is going to win an eight-page editorial shoot with the magazine, which is a huge, huge honour. It's not many models that get to be in the pages of Vogue. Um, it's the very lucky few. There were just these racks and racks of designer handbags and designer clothes and designer shoes. Gucci and Burberry and Fendi and <laughs> Drool. <laughs> what I want to speak to you about first is accessories because they've become such a hugely important part of fashion. She gave us a lesson on all of what's in this season, like the colours and the shapes and the styles. And as you can see here, silver is predominantly the colour of the season. We've got the huge giant Fendi bag here that's actually become an it bag. Short. Here it is interpreted by Gucci in a gorgeous little red dress like this. Metallics interpreted here by Burberry. A lot of metallic trims and really interesting clothes. But these clothes don't move easily, so as a model, you have to move them. Very architectural shapes in the shoes. I mean, they're really new. She gave like a personality to the clothes, so like if I was to go down a catwalk and wear one of those items, I'd know what I'd have to portray. Fendi by Karl Lagerfeld, it's normally quite futuristic. And of course Armani, Armani is the designer to the stars. Chanel's a terribly important designer in the world of fashion. Do you all know about yes. Chanel? Yes. And do you know who the designer is of Chanel now? No. Like it's embarrassing in front of Jodie and Jonathan not to know stuff. It's so much more embarrassing in front of Kirsty not to know anything was originally Gabrielle Chanel, but who's the designer now in Paris? Girl, you've got to know this. I'm more old as that. Um... One of the most important designers in fashion, that is Karl Lagerfeld, one of the greats. Do you read all the fashion magazines? Because it's important. Like, I know for me, I've only just started reading, like, Vogue and that since I've been in the house. Yeah. Um, how old are you? I'm um, 18. Right. So what sort of magazines did you read before that? Um, <laughs> New Weekly. <laughs> Mm. At the end of our lesson with Kirsty, Jonathan told us that we would have a challenge. So really, it's now up to you girls, when you get home, get out the fashion magazines and really learn it. Because tomorrow, we'll be testing you in a challenge. Be ready to go at 8am in the morning. Okay, let's go. Thank you so much. It was a huge reality check. I need to really step my game up this week and just read Vogue like it's a Bible. Basically, we're opening this meeting because we found that there's a divide in the house. T -t 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 T-unit. T-unit consists of Alice, Sophie, Anika, Jordan, Danica. Everybody, Bar Paloma and Steph are in T-unit, whatever T-unit is. Topic of conversation was Paloma. At least she knows she's not boring, she's being bitched about. It's like, remember that Impulse yeah, commercial? Impulse. She goes, oh, they said I did extremely well. And then how cut was she when I got it? It was so funny. She says really fucked up stuff. And then she says really backstabbing stuff about other people. She has been horrible to all three of my closest friends in the house. Jordan's solution was to play pranks on um, Paloma and to a lesser extent, Steph. You know what we got today? What? We got honey, whipped cream and eggs. <laughs> what can we come up with those three ingredients? They're in the bar. We so we plotted a little plan that we were going to make a Paloma Pavlova. We ran into the underages room. We got the honey, <laughs> lifted up Paloma's sheets and put all the honey on her mattress. That's good. That's good too much. 
we got the salt and put the salt in Steph's bed. Salt. Put the whipped cream in the pillowcases. Then we'll hit a little egg in the pillowcase in Palumba's bed as well. There we go. Hold on. The intention of the pranks, I think, are to bring Palumba to breaking point. gonna be some tears and probably a lot of shouting. <laughs> Steph had already got in bed and she said, Paloma, come here. And I said, why? And she said, is it just me or did someone put something in my bed? Oh, my God. It was covered in salt. And I was like, did they do anything to you? I went and checked my bed and there wasn't any salt. And I said, no, there's nothing there. But I pulled back the covers and I sort of started to see um, like little droplets of something. So I pressed on the bed and um, heaps more came up and um, it was actually honey. Yeah, I can smell it. Oh, look, we got them. We found the pillows. We found the pillows. We found the pillows. Did they? We're finding them now. <laughs> what is that? It made me extremely angry. Sophie and Jordan and like a nature and stuff um, were laughing from the other side of the um, house. If they want to do that, I can be so much meaner. <laughs> so why the hell is Anika laughing? She's pissing herself. I thought she was my friend. Yeah, how much I'm trying to resist walking out there and just punching them both in the face. Why haven't they come out and told us off yet? Because they're scared of us. If we, like, just don't react to this, then they'll just go, oh, well, it's no fun. Yeah, true. They wanted us to retaliate, and, um... It's sort of like at school with bullies, like if you just ignore them or pretend like you don't care, then that would um, affect them more because they want a reaction. Now, I do feel a little bit ripped off. We're talking about time and effort. She wants us to feel like it's, you know, it hasn't affected her, but really it has affected her. Trust me, it has affected her. So, like, we fixed up all our beds and went to sleep and I was pretty upset because I had no idea what I had done. I still don't get it, though. Like, why put honey on your bed and then just salt on mine? Because they hate me more than they hate you. Ladies... What are we going to do next? I'm going to have to do something a little bit more extreme. Yeah, because obviously that didn't push any buttons. <laughs> Good night, Paloma. Good night. I wouldn't say it's bullying. It's just a bit of a muck around and it's a competition. You know, game on, Mole.